Thank you for joining me for Classical Art Tips. I'm Marilyn Butler, and today we're going to look at two-point perspective drawing. So this is a drawing by a student who asked for feedback because she felt like her perspective was all off. And she learned some rules for drawing perspective, and she said she felt like she followed them, but she didn't like, uh, didn't feel like it came out right. So it turns out that she's actually done a lot better job than she thinks. It looks a little bit strange. We're going to find out why. There's an easy fix for that. So in two-point perspective, horizontal parallel lines will appear to recede to a point on the horizon. And this point is called vanishing point. And in two-point perspective, there are two points on the horizon. So the most important thing to identify first is the corner of this unit, square, box, whatever building, that is closest to you. So that's uh, we see that here with the red line. And then we want to look at the two intersecting lines at the bottom. And this creates kind of a upside down T or an arrow shape. But it's important to look at what those angles are and to be aware of that. So when you're doing perspective, this is one of the very first things that you want to do, and it'll help you draw perspective better if you're aware of these three lines and how they interact with each other. So on the right hand side, those two uh, lines, the one at the top and the one at the bottom are parallel lines which appear to recede to a point on the horizon. And we notice we have our horizon in this in the center there. This uh, building is both above and below our horizon line, which is our eye level. And then we see this happening on the other side too. So the perspective, uh, the vanishing point is closer on the right-hand side, and that means we will see a little less of that side of the building uh, if it's equal on all the sides. And then on the left-hand side, the vanishing point's a little further away, and we'll see a little more. So this is how it looks if you apply this to a building like a house. So again, we're going to look at that, identify that one line first that is closest to us. And then the uh, horizontal lines on the right hand side will appear to recede to a vanishing point on the right. And then the same thing on the left. So that's basically how you get the sides of the house drawn. So what we want to notice here on the student's drawings is where she has placed the vanishing points. So just remember that. We're going to come back to that. She did make all her lines uh, recede there, which is excellent. Here's the horizon or eye level, and her vanishing points are on the horizon. And here's that red line with the corner that's closest to us. So uh, the two sides recede and go further away from us on each side of that line. So here we look at our lines at the bottom, and they look great. They have, are going from that bottom uh, corner, and they recede two points on the horizon, which are the vanishing points. And the top ones recede to the same vanishing points. This is important because all the lines on the left should go to that same vanishing point it, for uh, portions of the building that are lined up, and the same thing on the right. So then we have this other building further away. And uh, it also goes to that same vanishing point. And the other side of that building goes to the opposite vanishing point. And then we'll look at this other building over here. Again, uh, the one line goes to the vanishing point on the right, and the other line goes to the vanishing point on the left. OK, good. So that's our drawing again. And this is our four main lines. So we'll remember those and our and our vanishing points. So here is what's going on with her drawing that makes it look strange. On the top, we have the drawing as she's done it. And underneath is one that I stretched out. Now, on the drawing on the bottom, other than the fact that things look a little stretched uh, horizontally, it actually has a more realistic look to it. 
because the angles of the tops and the bottoms of the buildings are a little more natural. And the reason for that is because the vanishing points are further away. The only problem with the perspective in this on the top is that her vanishing points were just placed a little bit too close in. All the other lines are done correctly, technically. Um, and we look at the little sketch on the left-hand side, and that's real valuable. You can see that those parallel lines appear to recede to points on the horizon, and it's a little bit more relaxed and gentle perspective than the perspective on the drawing on the top. And you can see that if you're going to draw a car, a good way to think of it is a boxy thing. Put the car in the box, get the perspective on that, and then you can uh, get, do more on, on the object. Good. So now here we have that original drawing we saw of the house, and then I squished it. So you see on the bottom here, it looks kind of cockeyed or uh, out of kilter. It's not that the perspective lines are incorrect. They are drawn correctly. It's just that that's the look that you get when the vanishing points are too close in or not far enough apart. So this is how I work with that. This is the student's drawing on the top. If it was my drawing, what I do is I will just tape a little piece of paper onto the sides so that I can extend my horizon and put my vanishing points uh, further out. It makes sense that she put her vanishing points on the paper she was drawing on. Uh, she put them as far apart as she could, but it wasn't far enough to make the drawing looks natural. So you see on the bottom, when I put the vanishing points further out, it changes the angles of those red lines and it will give a more natural look. So you can see this is kind of what it looks like when it's stretched out and it does look a little bit more natural. So uh, we're looking here at that lime green line, we're looking at the checkered floor. And we'll see that she got all of those lines really well going to that vanishing point. And then we have the lines going to the other vanishing point. And so her checkered floor looks really good. I didn't put all the lines in, but enough so that you can see. But it looks a little steep on the drawing on the top, and that's because the vanishing points are so close in. You see on the bottom, when I stretched out the vanishing points, it flattens out the floor. And on the, the one on the bottom looks like a floor that you would not be afraid to walk across, whereas the one on the top seems a little steep. We might fall over or something. So that's placing the vanishing points far enough apart will affect every perspective line in the drawing and make it look more natural. So another thing we can look at here is the thickness of the wall. So the purple line is lining up the opening at the top of the building with the opening at the bottom. And then the second purple line shows the width, like the, the width of what the wall would be on the top. We don't get that feeling that the that the wall is that wide at the bottom. So that's one of the things we would want to add to that to give a feeling. You want to feel like this wall is the same width throughout. And we'll look at another one, this one here. This one has the opposite. The one on the bottom it appears wider and the one on the top appears that the wall is skinnier, which is the opposite of the one that we just looked at. But we would want them to be the same. And then on the end here, these would want to be the same also, and they would probably want to be lined up vertically because that's typically what architects do with a building is line up the windows. So now we're going to look at this little point at the top, which is a really charming addition to the shape of the opening here. But it wasn't in the center, so we're going to find how do you find the center of something like that? So how you find the center of a regular square is you start with your square and you get a <clears throat> diagonal line and another diagonal line. And then the green line is your line in the center, which bisects uh, the two sides of the square. So that's how you would find the middle of this square. Now let's see how we find the middle of a square in perspective. So on the right hand side, we have a square in perspective but we are going to do exactly the same thing. 
The first will get the one blue diagonal line from corner to corner. Then we get another diagonal line from corner to corner. And then the green line in the center gives us the center. On the perspective one, you will notice that the side of the square on the right hand side is a little bit wider than the one on the left. And that's because the square is in perspective. And this is when you find the center this way, you can give an added feeling of authority to your uh, image, the way that you do your perspective in your image. So let's see how we can apply that to the actual opening. So here's the actual opening. On the left, you can see the portion of the building we're looking at. And on the right, we have an enlargement. And so I drew the box, the red box, which is the basically the square in perspective. And then we get our two diagonal lines. And then our green line up the center. And you can see that what's going on is the little point thing at the top, which we assume would be in the center of the opening is not. And that one little thing is what makes the opening of that window or doorway, whatever it is, um, look a little bit out of kilter. So we'll see what we can do with that. On the left hand side, I have moved that little point at the top so that it does line up with the green uh, center of the window. And we'll take away our construction lines here and you can look and you can see that the opening or the window on the left looks more natural and realistic. The one on the right looks a little bit skewed and that's because that point at the top would not want to be that far to the right. So the last thing that can be done with this drawing is add a little bit of shadows. Now, uh, there isn't a specific feeling of light on this, uh, but we can assume that light is outside the building, maybe from the sun, and that the interior of this building would tend to have more shadow on it. So the drawing as it was is on the left, and on the right, I just added a little bit of darkness to the interior to give a feeling that there's some atmosphere in there. Now, the student had some lovely paintings and stuff on the wall, and I didn't reproduce that, but you could still have those in there and just have a little bit of a feeling of shadow. And that helps you enhance the feeling that it's an interior. So I wasn't able to add all the changes onto this drawing. For instance, I didn't uh, do change the thicknesses of the walls or that little uh, pointy thing at the top of the window. But on the drawing underneath, I have stretched it out so it looks a little more natural and I have a little bit of the shadow in there and aside from the fact that most of the things look too wide it still looks like it's sitting there uh, a little bit more than the one on the top and it has a little more feeling of depth because of the shadow so that shows some things that could be done to this drawing or an, you know another drawing um, done like this not every Feedback is about changing the piece of artwork that you've done. Most feedback, in fact, is more about learning things that you can use on the next drawing. So here's the original drawing, which she really did a very good job. She shows that she knows how perspective works. The only problem was the vanishing points were too close in, but other than that, um, most of the perspective lines really very accurately done and I really like the value change in the bottom on the checkered floor how it's more contrast in the front corner there and gets to be less, less contrast and the, the stairs going up in the back are really well done so this was a great job and now we know more about how to do perspective a little more uh, accurately so good job so thank you for joining me if you like this please like and subscribe and I offer private lessons, consultations, and friendly feedback via Zoom and video recording through my website, oceanviewarts.com. So thanks again.